If you're thinking this is a bit of a weird outfit to be wearing to record an online course with um, athleisure tights on the bottom, it's about to get weirder. I just want the sun to shine on the rain. I just want someone who will hold my face. I just want the trees. I want to believe you and I will be good. It will be good. I can absolutely hardly believe we'll that be I'm good. saying this, but it has been a year from when I had an L4, L5 discectomy and a hemilaminectomy, and I gave you guys an update from this very room, from this very chair. And I remember being in a lot of pain. I think it was obvious from my pained expression throughout that video that I was really battling. Obviously, surgery is never going to be a small undertaking, and I knew that from the get-go, so I was always expecting that there was going to be a long recovery process, but I really just wanted to fill you guys in. I've had an amazing response in terms of the people that did watch that original video and the subsequent follow-up video, just in sending well wishes and sharing their experience with a hemilaminectomy or a discectomy and really asking questions in terms of how I was doing. So I thought that I would just share with you guys a quick update just to say life is so much better on the other side. I really do feel like the first six months is a really hard time to get through because of course you're still dealing with things like physio and the fallout of that initial loss of I guess flexibility and I felt for a long time like I had sort of like a dead patch in my back. The major thing that's changed between the last video that I recorded in this video is that I went to a physio to discuss the remaining hip pain that I had. So although 95% of my symptoms are completely gone, I was still battling with hip pain, specifically in the morning when I woke up. And I was concerned because I know that there is a likelihood that after you have a discectomy, there is the chance that you can slip a disc again. And so originally I was a little bit fearful that maybe something had happened or maybe a subsequent disc, something had sort of gone a bit awry. But lucky for me, she had basically just said to me, look, I think that you going back to running without maybe building up the strength is really where your problem is lying and so she had suggested that I take up Pilates and I must say I'm a very sporty person but Pilates just categorically did not appeal to me it's not something that I've ever thought of trying I must say even yoga it's just it's on the fringe of what's actually enjoyable for me if I'm honest I think I do love the occasional yoga class but it's definitely not something that I love doing like three times a week like a lot of people that I know so when she suggested Pilates I was kind of like oh gosh you know I think it's going to be one of those grudge things that I have to do in the same way that I begrudgingly did my 12 weeks of physio whatever it was but I must say that has been the critical game changer for me so I do reformer Pilates and I do it about three to four times a week. It is a bit more of an expensive um, sport, especially in Australia. Um, it is quite a pricey undertaking, but I can definitely say hand on heart that it's been 100% worth it in terms of just how I've been feeling ever since. So I just completed my 48th strong class. So I'm almost halfway to the to the hundreds club <laughs> i feel like in your 20s that would have been some sort of prestigious drinking achievement that's what it sounds like but in your 30s it means the pilates classes that you do so i must say that originally i was a little bit nervous because my flexibility like i said was just not there i had that dead spot in my back but ever since i just flagged it to the instructor to say like hey you know I'm not 100%, but I'm going to try my best. I think I really realized that everyone obviously has some sort of niggle or injury to be mindful of. So it's not something that you necessarily have to be self-conscious of. And I've noticed that the core strength that you develop when you're doing Pilates is obviously what's going to help your back. And I suspect that actually that was part of the problem and part of the reason why potentially I did herniate the disc twice is because I'd never done any sort of core based exercises. I had done things like spinning and boxing where you're less so focused on that core stuff. 
maybe a little bit of boxing, but things like tennis and running without that core strength is really, I think, where the misalignments can sometimes come in. What I also liked is that the physio that I went to was a golf-focused physio, so I think they would have a lot of experience in terms of managing that misalignment. And I had managed to move to Australia, so I definitely wasn't sure in terms of the support that I would receive because I'd had my surgery in South Africa, if I was going to be okay, if I was going to need another MRI, but definitely the advice that I had been given from both a GP in Australia as well as the physio that I saw in Australia was by the time you go down the route of requesting subsequent MRIs and investigating with surgeons more in depth, you're kind of already putting yourself in that root of open to a second surgery and although my surgeon had told me that there's a likelihood that I may have to have a subsequent surgery I think I'm now in the mindset where I'm just like if I can just wholeheartedly focus on the recovery from this initial surgery I have so much better of a chance to avoid a second surgery altogether so the questions that I received were things like can I run yes absolutely I've been able to run 5k park runs I think I managed to do a 12k trail run but I since realized, obviously, that running is probably not the best sort of a weekly sport for me. I'm probably not going to be the kind of person that's running three times a week, just because obviously it is putting strain on your spine. And if you were to misstep or fall, it could potentially, you know, have a negative impact on your surgery site. Whereas something like Pilates, it's far less prone to injury. But I'll definitely say that there's a lot of that sort of twisting um, motion and ab work that has made me feel even when I'm just walking on a day-to-day -day basis I do feel like my posture is slightly improved I feel a bit more put together and I just feel happier to be honest I am able to exercise in a way that I was previously and I'm less cognizant or mindful of oh you know this horrible injury that continues to plague me so I think just mentally getting myself out of that place is really really been helpful but I did just want to say to everyone that's been following along for this journey is there's obviously no one size fits all I never want to promote the surgery and say that it's not a big deal when it absolutely is but what I will say is if you continue to prioritize your recovery that is what's going to give you the best results so I definitely think working with your team of medical professionals is what's going to be the best approach and then once it's back to you all you really can do is prioritize your recovery and make sure you're resting heaps I sleep so much like definitely more than what I slept before the surgery so just try to make a point of giving myself that extra grace and making sure that I don't strain myself so I can do probably like three Pilates days in a row and then day four I'm kind of like okay cool call it a day because you know the last thing I would want is to overexert myself so in terms of my timeline end to end it's not that it takes a full year to recover fully I would say that I probably felt fully ish recovered after probably the six to eight month mark I think it's just that eight to twelve month mark where I have prioritized strengthening my body and getting my mind a little bit more into a place of positivity and rejecting the fact that even if I do need a, a subsequent surgery in the future it's not something that I can think about too much now and just get back to the things that you love because I think this sort of affliction really robs you of a lot of joy and happiness as it's happening and so you do need to once you're out the other side just be super conscious and cognizant of how you're showing up in the world that you're able to give your best for work and to your personal life and I'm hoping that I'm better able to do that and so I'm really proud of leading a life now that's a lot more balanced I do feel like I make a point of also trying to prioritize work and life a lot better so if ever I find myself overworking obviously it's already going to have a negative impact in terms of your posture and if you are working to the point that you're not able to exercise, which I found myself experiencing a little bit, it's really that pulling yourself towards yourself and being really specific about yourself as a priority. And I know, especially with women, it's quite hard to convince yourself that it is absolutely your priority to make sure that you're back to 100% because you can't pour from an empty cup. And so I really think that reminding myself of that several times a day or a week 
has been really, really good because it's just been a case of, you know what? Your health is never going to be something that you can get away with taking for granted. Life will force you to break or take breaks <laughs> or both. And I hope that anyone who has the surgery knows that absolutely it's not going to be a year long recovery, but you need to be cog cognizant that at least for the six months, there's going to be a considerable amount of your time and mindset that's taken up with the recovery. And then I'd say the following six months, it's a case of just recalibrating to a newer lifestyle, possibly picking up new hobbies like Pilates, if that's something that I could convince you of. I had mentioned previously that I was doing a lot of swimming, but since moving to Australia, I don't have a normal gym membership. I just have the Pilates membership. But if you had my optimal suggestion in terms of a recovery plan, I would probably suggest Pilates with swimming with some sort of mat exercises. So things like planking that are really gonna work your core and your stability muscles, as well as anything with like a BOSU ball um, or a Pilates ball would be really helpful. So if you're 100% committed to this road to recovery, that would really be my suggestion, but I think you could probably pick one of those three and you would find yourself back on the road to recovery soon as well. In terms of things that I wouldn't suggest, I must say that I did, I think I mentioned in my previous video I'd played paddle, which hadn't helped my back at all. If anything, it felt like things had gone slightly out of alignment then. And more recently, I played tennis. And although I absolutely love tennis and it was so wonderful to be back on the court, it's just not the kind of motions that you're ever that confident in. And I'm sure that I'll regain confidence on the court, but everything from like the smashing motion um, to running full speed up to the net are the kinds of things that I think mentally I still just have a little bit of a block on. And so if you're okay to play with 50% of your mojo, that's cool. But if like me, you're probably wanting to put more of your um, full butt behind it, it is quite difficult to reconcile that because obviously you will still have it in your mind that you're 18 or whatever it may be and that you're 100% where obviously that's still not necessarily the reality. But mainly I did really just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's followed along for this journey. I can't foresee myself making any more back recovery videos. I more just wanted to pop in and say thank you so much for all the love and support. I'm thinking of everyone who's commented and said that they are going through something similar and that they are either in pain or they're in recovery mode. I have been there and I just know how disheartening it can be when you're logging into Instagram, seeing all of your friends living their absolute best lives, traveling, playing sports, and you feel like you're bed bound. But hopefully I can be the motivation to see that it does all pass. I'm back in South Africa. I'm traveling here at the moment. I'm between jobs. I'm headed back to Australia in two weeks time. And even just being able to catch a plane by myself with absolutely no concern for sitting for 12 hours from Perth to Nisna, where my parents live, has been such a blessing. So it does absolutely all pass, but I think just committing yourself as wholeheartedly as you possibly can to that recovery journey is what's going to put you in great stead and having the medical professionals and team behind you that you trust 100%. And I must say it wasn't ideal that I moved in the middle of all of this because it meant that I could no longer go and see the physio that I had been seeing that it helped me so much and I no longer had access to the surgeon who'd done the surgery. But I think even with that, I was mindful just to make sure that there are people that I can chat to in Australia or in Perth if I have subsequent issues. But thankfully, I haven't needed to. So touch wood, I'm just really hoping that the success of the surgery can continue, that I can keep on with my Pilates and really carry on with a very active lifestyle. It's something that makes me so happy. And I think I might have mentioned in a previous video, there's something that still helps me when I do get niggles of the hip pain, which is like a very spiky ball that you're meant to release your fascia of your foot with but I often will just lie on it so put it on my lower back to release that muscle that feels like it's kind of clenching on but I'd say that the discomforts probably experienced for my first five minutes of waking up 
and I'm not sure if like I said if it's that exact same L4 L5 that's still giving issues or if it's something slightly different so I wouldn't want to panic anyone or put them off but I'd say that my pain went from being absolutely unbearable to living a very happy and active life and just sometimes noticing in the morning that my hip feels quite sore or if I wake up in the night I sometimes battle to roll over onto my side but can run, can do Pilates, can play tennis. So in terms of where I was before the surgery and now it's obviously chalk and cheese. So thinking of you, sending love and prayers your way and I hope that everyone can have as good of a recovery as what I've had from the surgery. So you're in my thoughts. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye. I want to believe it. I want to believe it. That we'll be good